Greetings and konnichiwa, and welcome back to the Onyx Tavern Vlog series on Shuriken Sentai Nin Ninja. I'm your host, Rick the Barkeep, and today let's talk about Shinobi number five, the Space Ninja UFO Maru. I think this is a really good episode, and I think we're getting off to the right foot on the Nin Ninja series as a whole. Now, say, unlike Tokyuju, when that series started, we didn't get a lot of episodes that were dedicated to each of the characters, understanding their motivations, characteristics, and so forth. Now, of course, part of that series was the mystery and the build-up um, to, to what's going on with these characters. Here, we don't have that, so it's a little bit easier for us to understand who these people are, understand... Uh, their emotions, their motivations, uh, all that good stuff. And in this episode, Katsumi, Momo Ninja, is no different. We learn a, a lot about her, what motivates her, and what makes her unique as a character. And frankly, I'm, I'm really kind of impressed uh, with the episode because... It really does try to deliver a moral message in there. Now, whether I agree with it or not, we'll go ahead and talk about it. But it does set up an interesting dilemma for her character, but also tells us what quality of character that she has. So, basically, the, what happens is, is that there's a monster that is uh, created, but this monster claims he doesn't want to hurt people, he just wants to give out balloons. The Nin Ninja don't buy it, so they decide to stake him out to see if he does anything menacing or not, and, you know, if he's, if he's truly innocent or if he's a bad guy. Um, now, while doing this, uh, we find out that Katsumi is basically, you know, she's late, she's tired all the time, and, and the reason is is that she's actually going to college uh, during this period. Um, she, she's going to college, she's practicing to be a ninja, she's learning to be a ninja, and of course she's got to do all this stakeout. So she's really kind of got a lot on her plate. And she has a good conversation uh, with Yakumo in it, where he basically says to her, you know, you're trying to do, you're trying to go to college and you're trying to be a ninja, I don't think it's possible that you can go ahead and do both. Which is an interesting point, because... I mean, if anybody's been through school, whether it's college or high school or anything like that, it does become difficult to do multiple things at once. You try to focus on your studies and get good grades, but when you have an extracurricular or have friends or even a job that you want to go ahead and do, you know, one of them's going to suffer, if not both. And what this episode's kind of indicating is that her ninja training and her punctuality are obviously suffering because she's trying to go to college to become a scientist. Because it turns out that... Uh, just like uh, Takaharu was inspired by his grandfather, you know, to, to be a ninja, she was inspired by the legend that he contacted a bunch of alien races, so now she wants to go ahead and be a scientist. She doesn't specify what field she wants to go into. I don't know if she wants to go into, you know, astronomy or anything like that. But she says she's just interested in, you know, space and science, and I guess we're going to go ahead and leave it at that. So... What actually happens in the shift is that Katsumi tells her the problem, but Yakumo, he's really kind of worried about her. You know, is she going to be able to dedicate this uh, time to being a ninja and still do the thing that she wants? Because what we also learn about Yakumo in this episode is before he got involved in all this ninja and magic stuff, he wanted to be a soccer player. But, you know, as things happen, he grew up and he just couldn't go ahead and do that. And he's worried that Katsumi is not going to be able to do what she wants because of responsibilities, um, you know, as a ninja. And he doesn't know, is she going to give up college? Is she going to give up being a ninja? He's not really quite sure. Now... The resolution to this is, is that Katsumi is able to develop a uh, transmitter uh, or some sort of device uh, which is able to help defeat uh, the enemy in the end. And what she states is, I'm going to do both because I used my know-how in college to be a scientist to help become a ninja. So it's supplementing my uh, ninja abilities, which is great. But again, the, the resolution is, I'm going to do both. I'm going to go to college, and I'm going to be a ninja at the same time. And, you know, there are two ways of going about this. I mean, either you do have her go to college and become a ninja, or she dumps college altogether and becomes a, a ninja. So depending on which way you go, you're going to have a different moral message to it. Um... And the thing is, 
I really think what they should have done is have her drop out of college to become a ninja, and I'll tell you why. I mean, she's obviously suffering at one, if not both of these. She's not getting enough sleep, so she really has to make a decision. What is more important to her, her going to college and essentially her dream of being a scientist or protecting the world, which is a dilemma we've seen with many other uh, characters throughout Sentai and Power Rangers in the past. Now, in this particular instance, she decides, again, she's going to go ahead and choose both, meaning that she wants to keep her dream, but she has to do what she has to go ahead and do. I think the more realistic thing would have been for her not to go to college and become a ninja, that because of the evil in the world, because of this job she's been assigned, she has to give up her dreams. I know that's very sad and depressing to go ahead and say, but I do think it's the more realistic path that imagine if she didn't have to become a ninja, if, you know, the ceiling uh, shurikens, you know, did not go away and all this problem didn't start, she would go to college and she would go ahead and be a scientist. She gets to fulfill her dream. But because evil has intruded upon the world, she has to change her plan. She has to do this because it's more important than her dreams are to her. And I think this also ties in with Yakumo in a way. Um, where, again, he just wanted to go you know, do this magic and all that kind of stuff, and he feels that he needs to be involved in this situation, you know, because he realizes we have to save the world and all that. And that goes back to something I said earlier in Yakumo's episode, where down the line is the grandfather and the rangers going to face any type of consequences based on these actions or inactions. So I said... You know, hey, what's going to happen down the line in which Yakumo can blame his grandfather? This happened because you didn't do your job. The burden is now on us because you weren't good enough at what you're doing. And I think if Katsumi had actually quit college and decided to be a ninja full time, then we'd have more fuel for the fire. Because then we'd have Yakumo saying to, to them, like, I didn't want to do this. Now look what's happened. You made me do this because, you know, you, you couldn't do your job right. And Katsumi can come up and say, I gave up my dream of being a scientist so that I could do your job and clean up your mess even after you inspired me. To which she may even feel guilty that she has to become a ninja because not only is she born into it, but the man that inspired her is requesting for her to go ahead and do this. You see where I'm going with this is that if she would give up her dream in the episode, then we can go ahead and have, you know, something down the line where it, this is building up for her character where she almost resents her grandfather. Which I, I do think that something like that is eventually going to have to happen in the series where it is said... Uh, you know, it's your fault that we did this, Grandfather. It's your fault that the, these tragedies, whatever that has happened, and now we're paying for you, and they kind of turned against them, which I, I, I hope they're kind of going for, because that seems to be what they're kind of building up uh, in these first couple of episodes. But the fact that Katsumi decided to go to college as well really kind of undermines that. And the message is, yeah, you can do both have your dream and do the things that are necessary, but... I mean, let's be honest, in the real world, how often does that happen? That you get to have your dream, but also do the thing that you are required to go ahead and do. You see what I'm saying? I know that sounds very pessimistic, and typically I, I don't usually think that way. But for the sake of drama, I do think that that's the way they should have gone this episode. Um... Beyond that, um, I, again, I, I think the story was handled well. The moments between the characters was really great. Um, so, again, I'm just kind of really excited to see where they go with these characters uh, and what they do with them and see this decision she makes to be in college and to be uh, a new ninja, how that will affect things uh, down the line. What I also want to go ahead and talk about is uh, the Zords. Now, I really didn't get a chance to, to talk about them. Yes, I did that whole video about, uh, you know, why they don't mix. You know, why is there a train, a dog, and a dragon, and all that. But now that we've actually gotten into the series, we got a little bit of backstory about them. And I'm really confused by a number of things. Um, first of all, let's point out the UFO Morrow makes its appearance in this episode. Now, what I actually like is that they go to the Drago form and try to chase the villain up into outer space, but once they get past the atmosphere, they really can't uh, get up there, which I like because it establishes that our 
our heroes have a limit to their abilities. Yeah, the, the dragon is very powerful, and yes, it can go ahead and fly, but it can't fly that far. It can't go out in the space. So I think that that's a, a great limitation to put in there, saying that they're powerful, but they're not all powerful. Because usually when you get into like the ninja magic stuff, it's kind of thought. To, uh, like that, you know, hey, they are powerful because they got magic, but again, showing these limitations are great. Uh, but they do obtain the UFO Morrow, which is decent, you know, it's a UFO starship, becomes a robot, combines and allows them to travel through space, and the battle on the moon was great. I think we need more fights on the moon. I, I think this is the first time we've done it um, since we've actually done a movie. I think since the Goanja Shinkanger movie, this is the first time I think we've had battle on the moon. I could be wrong on that, but, but still, it was, it was really amazing. Uh, I thought it was great. But uh, Takaharu states, while he's in the cockpit, that the UFO Maru must have been the way uh, in which the grandfather had communicated with the 30 different alien species. And this leads into what I'm trying to figure out about the Zords and their origins, because ba basically from uh, pa Pan Maru from the previous episode, it was basically stated that the ceiling shuriken became its true form again, meaning that the shurikens that the rangers used, that's a true form, they were then transformed to ceiling shurikens to put uh, our bad guy away, and they were just returning to their normal forms. So let's follow that line of logic just for a minute here. We know that they were sealed away, okay? The, the, our villain was sealed away 444 years ago by the ceiling shurikens. Now what that tells me is that they were elephants and spaceships and all that good stuff and then they were turned into you know the shurikens to, to seal them away then we know that the grandfather did fight him and resealed him at a later time meaning that they got the shurikens transformed back to normal forms and used them such as the ufo to contact the alien species then transform them back into sealing shurikens to seal him and now this third time, they are being released again and being used for a true purpose. So the question I'm trying to have is, I know we have established alien technology and, alien, and, and ancient civilizations going as far back as Zoo Ranger and so forth. But, so you're telling me that it was a, basically a UFO, a, a UFO Zord, then a ceiling shuriken, then a UFO Zord, then a ceiling shuriken, then from a ceiling shuriken to a, a monster back to a shuriken, back to its UFO form. I'm not really understanding exactly the origin of these particular Zords. That being said, the ones that the Rangers are using primarily, uh, their own individual swords, Zords are also confusing. Now, the Grandfather does state in the dialogue that he used alien technology to develop these Zords. So these Zords are new that he developed specifically for his grandchildren based on their interests. Which is another confusing thing. First of all, I'd like to know how he built them and what alien technology is he using. Is it the UFO Maru? And if that is the case, was it always an alien vehicle or was it something that was developed differently? Uh, again, I, I just have all these questions that don't seem to be answered. And he says he based them all on things that the children liked. So I, I, here's what I get. I get the, the ninja Maru for uh, Takaharu because he wants to be a ninja. I get that. Yakumo's dragon, I get that too based on his backstory. Nagi's uh, zord based on the dump truck. Okay, he's certified in doing that. So I guess I kind of get that. But it's just kind of saying, yeah, I'm certified to work in customer service. Therefore, your zord is going to be based on customer service it's i don't know it's it, it's kind of odd that way uh katsumi has a train but this episode establishes that she loves space and science not that trains don't have anything to do with science but other than the galaxy line it really has nothing to do with space so i think grandfather kind of missed the ball on that and since we don't know much about fuka at the moment why she gets a dog as her zord i'm also confused about so um Hopefully, those will be answered down the line. But the Zords are just really confusing at this point in their origin, their basis. And I also want to point this out. I didn't point this out in the first episode because I had so much else to go ahead and talk about. Where exactly are the Zords hiding? Because we do see Takahiro's Maru 
basically it's in a building and through like a trap door or something opens up and then it, it the, the zord comes out now uh, and and nagi's the same way it's like the road flips over and there's his zord um, I mean, I get at least Katsumi and, and Fuka's, which is a train on the tracks. Again, we established out to Kyuger that there are trains travel on track all the time. But that building that Takaharu's Maru is in, is that a real building? Is it a fake building? I mean, is there a fake building in downtown Tokyo that no one goes into? It's housing the Zord? I mean, I... <laughs> I, I don't really understand where it's hiding. I mean, again, we've had Zords before where they'll be cloaked, they'll be in different parts of the world, they'll be small, and then they can grow large. I mean, we've had reasonable explanations of where these things are at any given time. But right now, I'm just really kind of confused uh, where, where the Ninja Zords are hiding most of the time. So, very confusing. The only other thing I'd like to say about this episode uh, is just at the end, I do think it's funny that Gabi was kind of left at the altar where uh, Takaharu said I would come back to fight you and he's still sitting there. I wouldn't be surprised if by the next episode uh, he is still there waiting for him. But uh, again, overall, a, a good episode. I enjoyed it. Uh, Katsumi's come a little bit more alive here. She obviously ha has a closer relationship uh, with Yakumo. She seems to be I guess if I had to say there was a third person in charge, it would be her. She seems to be a lot more serious than, say, Nagi Fuka is. Um, and, of course, uh, much more well-trained and everything. So, yeah, I, I really, uh, really like her as a character, and I can't wait to see what happens next. So, for next time, we will be covering uh, Shinobi number 6. I will point out... Uh, between now and Shinobi number six, they are having a one hour special where uh, Ninja is crossing over of Kamen Rider Drive. Just like we did with Tokyuger, I will not be covering this crossover since I don't know anything about Kamen Rider. And to my knowledge, a lot of the crossovers have no bearing on the series later on. So I don't really see a point in doing it. So I apologize for you guys. Maybe somewhere down the line, if I do become interested in Kamen Rider, I will cover it. But I'm just going to go ahead and skip that and we'll go right into Shinobi number 6 uh, whenever that premiere is probably about two weeks from now. So, until then, I want to thank you guys for listening, have a good evening, and the tavern is now closed. <laughs>